Okay, connecting live video. Okay, it's connected. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, welcome to Open Door Baptist Church uh, Sunday service. Uh, one more week before we're allowed to open the church again. A lot of people have been asking. Uh, thank you for all your support and all the questions and things you've been telling us. So uh, today's sermon is the Lord looketh on the heart. So let's begin in prayer. Heavenly Father, thank you for bringing us here today. We ask for a special blessing for the people listening and those that are going to hear the word through other people. Send that Holy Spirit down through us so that we may have greater understanding of your word. We ask this in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Okay, so the Lord looketh on the heart. The fear of man bringeth a snare, but whosoever put his trust in the Lord shall be saved. So are you scared of people? Are you scared of what people think about you? Are you a people pleaser? Or are you a God pleaser? And the sermon today is about that. Um, so we're afraid sometimes of what people think about us. So we try to fit in and we do the wrong thing to fit in. And this isn't uh, a true Christian doesn't do that. We do the right thing, even if it turns the whole world against us. OK, so. This is Jesus said when he's speaking to the people and there's a lot of people now. Jesus Christ is right in front of these people now. And you can't get better preaching than that. You can't get a better teacher than that. You, you can't get a better opportunity than Jesus standing in front of you. Imagine this situation as it is. Um, we're going to have to close that. Otherwise we're going to hear. Okay. Uh, so he says, you won't come to me that you might have life. Okay. I'm right in front of you. And a lot of times Jesus is right in front of someone and they will not come to him so that they might have life. He says, I receive not honor from men. Now, what does Jesus mean? Jesus is saying, I'm not trying to be popular with people and be with the in crowd. You see, going against the scribes and Pharisees, it doesn't make you popular with the boys. He's not sitting there trying to make political moves and join this organization to become more popular. He's out there preaching the word of God. And this is the same thing for you. OK, forget about trying to fit in. If you're doing if the people are trying to get you to do something wrong, don't do it. He says to him, but I know you that you have not the love of God in you. How can you believe which receive honour one from another? So I'll give you a fancy title. I might call you deacon, pastor. I might give you fancy, fancy titles, as many as you want. I might call you the mayor of London or something like this, okay? You receive honour from men. Shouldn't you seek, the Bible says, and seek not the honour that cometh from God only? That knowledge inside you that you're doing the right thing, that's worth more than being popular with these other people. Um, so to him that knows to do good and doesn't do it, to him it is sin. If you know the right thing to do, and Christians you do know the right thing to do, and you don't do it, that's a sin. Okay, my brethren, have not the faith of our Lord Jesus Christ of glory with respect of persons now we've all made this mistake before somebody's high up somebody's maybe i remember i had an uncle that i looked up to in the uk i still you know look up to him as a great guy and you know he he put me on the spot he says to me i said to him he says to me this thing you know you've got to accept it I said to him, I'll never accept this LGBT rubbish. I said to him, I'll never accept it. He said to me, you know, you're just living in an old times. I said to him, are you a Christian? Are you a Christian? He said to me, yes. I goes, then you have to listen to the Bible. And that's all parts of the Bible. You can't take one bit out 
and be happy with that and say this sounds good this and it's not a menu where you pick what you want and I stood up for God and I felt good for doing it but there's other times all of us have felt that you know after that situation I wish I'd have said this exact thing I wish I'd have done that exact thing and it didn't happen and you regret not speaking when you were supposed to okay are you not then partial in yourselves and become judges of evil thoughts? You see, not doing the right thing is an evil thought. If I let my friends mock Christianity and I don't say nothing, I don't open my mouth because I want to be popular with my friends, that's an evil thought. I'm partial. I pretend to be a Christian, but I don't defend the faith. So let's do an example. And this is a fantastic example from Samuel. Uh, okay. So the Lord says to Samuel, how long will thou mourn for Saul, seeing I've rejected him? So Saul's anointed him with oil. He's gone to all the effort. But God told, Saul, uh, told Samuel that he's rejecting Saul. This guy is no good, okay, from reigning over Israel. Fill thy horn with oil and go. I will send thee to Jesse the Bethlehemite, for I have provided me a king from among his sons. Now, God doesn't say to him, which of his sons is going to be king? Why? You're about to find out why. Very, very important why. Okay? So Samuel gets scared. Because King Saul is a, you know, he's a very, very scary guy. He's a huge guy, a very, very scary guy. Samuel says, how can I go? If Saul hears about it, he will kill me. Guys, please, we're going to have to shut those windows. We'll bear it for the service. I know it's hot. Okay. Um, if Saul hear it, he will kill me. And the Lord said, take an effort with thee and say, I come to sacrifice to the Lord. So go in peace. And call Jesse to the sacrifice, and I will show you what you shall do. So he's not telling him everything's going to be all right. He's saying to him, I'll show you what you're going to do. And thou shalt anoint him unto me whom I name unto thee. I'm going to pick a king, God says to Samuel. OK, I'm going to pick the king, but he's not telling him which one it is or who his name is. Now, let's see what happens. So Samuel did that which the Lord spake. And if you do that, you're fine. If you always do what God tells you to do, you're fine. OK. And he came to Bethlehem and the elders of the town trembled at his coming and said, Comest thou peaceably? Because they know Samuel. And he said, peaceably, I come to sacrifice to the Lord, sanctify yourselves, come with me to sacrifice. And he sanctified Jesse and his son. So this is King David's dad. Okay. Sorry. Sorry, was I, was I going too fast? Sorry about that. So he sanctified Jesse and his sons and called them to the sacrifice. So he's coming in a peaceful way, which is how all Christians should come. Whenever you're going to start to say something, whenever you're going to make a point, whenever you're going to debate, whenever you're going to even speak to someone, come peaceably. People forget that. They want to win the argument, no matter how many hurtful things they say to the other person. You won't win the argument with the devil's weapons, only with God's ones. So come in peace. Okay, so it came to pass that they were come, that he looked on Eliab and said, Surely the Lord's anointed is before him. Look at the size of this guy. Look at this guy. This must be God's anointed. You know, uh, he's got the look. I think this guy is perfect. So Samuel, Samuel thinks this is the guy. But the Lord said to Samuel, look not on his countenance. Don't look at the way the guy looks. Or on the height of his stature, because he's a big guy. He thinks this guy would make a brilliant king. You know, he's the guy. He's got what we need. Or on the height of his stature, because I have refused him. For the Lord seeth, not as man seeth. For man looketh on the outward appearance, but God looketh on the heart. Okay, and that's the same when you're going to marry someone. That's the same when you're going to be friends with someone. Okay, uh, don't look how people see if that's a popular guy. I want to be with him. That's a popular, you know, that girl's fantastic. Look how she looks. I've got to be with her. Look on the heart. Okay, so this is a good lesson for everyone here. Now, Jesse made seven of his sons. So this is uh, King David's dad. He's not king yet. But this is David's dad, and he hasn't put David in this amount. 
Yeah, because he thinks, just like Saul, uh, just like Samuel thinks, how can a kid serve God? You know, we'll pick the right guy. This must be okay. So he made these seven sons to pass before Samuel, and Samuel said to Jesse, "The Lord has not chosen these. These people that look that you think that man thinks is perfect for the job, God hasn't chosen these people." So Samuel says to Jesse, "Are these all your children?" And he said, "There remaineth yet the youngest, you know. And behold, he keep the sheep." <laughs> You see the double meaning there, okay? He keeps the sheep. He's looking after the flock, yeah? And Samuel said to Jesse, send forth and fetch for him, for we will not sit, sit down till we come here. So me and you, Jesse, we would have picked one of these big strapping lads who we think is, uh, he looks the part. He looks the part of king. You know, we'll pick a king, but the Lord hasn't chosen. Right, so he sent and brought him in. Uh and he was ruddy with a, a with all a beautiful countenance and goodly to look to. So he's a you know he's a little kid, goodly goodly looks and stuff like that. And the Lord said, "Arise, anoint him, for this is he." Now you're getting sh we're getting shocked here because we're thinking we need the king here, and you've picked a little kid. That's not who I would have picked. Yeah, pick Moses. I mean, if you need someone to go and speak to Pharaoh, the last person you want to speak to Pharaoh is someone who's meek. He said he was the most meek and humble man. Yeah, he's got a speech problem. And that's the guy you send to Pharaoh to speak to. Okay, so God picks you, although it's unlikely. Some people will say, you don't look like a pastor. You know, pastors have hair, you know, or, or something like that. It's not up to you how you think, you know, because there's a lot of people and we've seen the scandals on the news that look like pastors and they're not. They had they looked the part, they had the countenance, but they weren't real. OK, so God knows the heart. OK, Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed him in the middle of his brethren. Notice that the brothers don't have a problem with this. OK. So right in the middle of everyone that they thought was supposed to be worthy, God anoints someone. So God doesn't care what they people feel about it. Okay, this is the one I want, anoint this guy. And the Spirit of the Lord, the Holy Spirit, comes upon David from that day forward. So he has uh, this, this Holy Spirit. Uh, so Samuel rose up and went to Ramah. Okay. But here's an interesting thing. The Spirit of the Lord departed from Saul. The Holy Spirit left Saul. Now, why is it leaving Saul? Saul was a pleaser of the people. Okay? Saul wanted to keep people happy. The people were worried, so he started sacrificing bulls. No, that's not what God wanted. Stop worrying about what the people want and worry about what God wants. Okay? So the Spirit of the Lord departed from Saul, and an evil spirit from the Lord troubled him. Now, why would God send an evil spirit? Okay, the evil spirit from the Lord. Why would God send an evil spirit to Saul? You'll see the reason in a minute. But so do you know that the hand of God, you'll see, you'll see, I'll show you. But there's a very good reason why God does everything. Now, from the beginning, this guy is a herder of sheep. And we have to teach him the ways of a king. Okay, we have to teach David how the king stuff works, how to do it. So God's going to need to put him in a position to do that, okay? Now, David was the person that brought music into the church. If you're wondering how music got into churches, it was uh, David. He was doing that, yeah. <laughs> I will dance before the Lord. Okay, uh, said to him, behold now, and he was, now Saul's servant said to him, behold now, an evil spirit from God troubleth thee. This isn't later on. This is straight away, okay? People are looking at Saul, and he's got a demonic visage and stuff like that. There's an evil spirit inside you, okay? Watch how God's hand moves. Let our Lord now command thy servants, which are before thee, to seek out a man, guess who's coming, <laughs> okay, uh, who's a cunning player on a harp. So David was a musician. Obviously, God's going to now put David right next to the king. So he's made it so that this unlikely person's going to take over. Okay, 
is a comfort. And it will come to pass when an evil spirit from God is upon thee, that he shall play with his hand, and thou shalt be well. So basically now, David has, has uh, they, David is now, um, has to be next to Saul, the play so this evil spirit doesn't trouble him. Saul's got no say in the matter, okay, but God has arranged it through the hand of God that David is learning how to be king. Now let's see how that happens. David came to Saul, now he's in the right place, exactly how God wanted it, and stood before him and loved him greatly, became his armor bearer. Now, if you're bearing someone's armor, you're going everywhere with him. You're seeing how to run a country. You're seeing how to be a king. Yeah, you're carrying his armor. You're with him all the time. And he can't leave uh, David alone <laughs> because he needs him to get rid of this evil spirit. So we see how the hand of the Lord's happened. Okay. So Saul sent to Jesse saying, let David, I pray thee, stand before him if he has found favor in my sight. Yep. And when it came to pass that the evil spirit from God was upon Saul, David took a harp and played with his hand. So Saul was refreshed and was well, and the evil spirit departed from him. Now, why have I highlighted that? Because there's a lot of people that are troubled by the supernatural. Sometimes they're going through rough times and, and stuff like this. Sometimes they found that if you sing out a Christian song, suddenly they feel all right again. And that's what happens. And there's an example that's happened from, from this. It's happened from uh, someone I know very closely in the UK. And they said to me, every time I sung this song, all well, these things left me, the nightmares left me, the, the, the oppression left me, all, all these things. And it happens. Sing Christian songs, people. It gets rid of them. There was this uh, Satanist person, and he said, I remember, he said, the thing that we hate the most is when they sing praise to God. Now, when they sing praise to God, this is uh, it's something that, that annoys the Satanists the most. So apparently they come in to disrupt the services. They come in and they start screaming or pretending to be overcome with stuff like this. Okay. So the real Christians rebuke, sing, and expose it. False Christians practice sin and defend it. A friend of the world is an enemy of God. So, for example, if you're going to keep your mouth quiet, because you want to be popular. You know, I mean, if, if Samuel kept his mouth quiet because he wanted to be popular, none of that would have happened. All these, the, the, the will of God, he trusted the will of God. Okay? If you rebuke sin blatantly, then you're a friend of God. You've done the right thing. You've helped that person. You've helped your friend. You've told him the bad things in his life. Okay. A false Christian will say, uh, I'll just forgive everything, allow everything, everything's okay, anything goes in the church. Any, it's not. They, they, they will put the churches to sleep and there won't be any more sin exposed. There won't be any more right or wrong. It will just be a happy place where people go to listen to music. And it's not, it's not a real church. A church keeps people righteous. It keeps people with the will of God. OK. Uh, now, the Lord spoke to Paul in, uh, in the night by a vision. Do not be afraid, but speak and do not keep silent. So what we have here is uh, people afraid to speak to someone. They respect the people too much. They say to these people, uh, they say to these people, uh, keep quiet. Don't, don't, don't judge that person. Don't uh, speak ill of that person. You know, the devil is the one who's uh, the accuser. Don't accuse anyone of anything and stuff like this. And what they'll do with that is they'll make people okay with evil. And slowly that evil will creep into a church. And But mainly it's for your life as well. You will regret, people listening to this, please listen to me. You will regret every time you were afraid to speak. Every single time that you kept your mouth quiet to be popular, every single time you were a, not, you feel like a coward. I'm not saying you was a coward, but you feel as if 
you should have said the right thing, but you were too scared to say it. Now, I remember there was a, an older uh, 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 sort of fake priest that was trying to talk to me. And the guy was older than me. And I thought to myself, you know, respect your elders and stuff like that. But I was right in what I was saying. But I sort of kept it down because it, it, and I didn't help that guy by doing that. Okay? I didn't help myself either. I didn't help that guy. Because he was older than me, I, I, I was, even though I was in the right, I didn't make a point of it. I just said, I, I said what was what, and I just left it there. But that, 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 that's not the way to be a Christian. The way to be a Christian is to tell people the truth. The way to be a Christian is to convict people of sin. The way Jesus, when he was here, he spoke more about hell than he did about heaven. Why? Because that's love. Love is warning people about hell. Love is warning people about the, the, the path that they're going is going to lead them straight down. Okay? That's not, you're not helping that person by keeping quiet. So never, ever keep quiet. And don't keep quiet because that person's in a special position or a special, hey, you can sit there. Okay. So, <laughs> um, okay. You adulterers and adulteresses, know you not that friendship of the world is en enmity with God? Whosoever, therefore, will be a friend of the world. Yeah, if you want to see the, see the screen, you can sit there. Okay? Okay. The adulterers and adulteresses. Now, what is God saying here? You're cheating on me, is what he's saying. <laughs> okay? Are you adulterers and adulteresses? Know you not that friendship with the world is enmity with God. You become my enemy. Every time you lie to fit in, every time you keep quiet because you're scared to talk, Okay, you cheat on me. You're an adulterer and an adulteress. Who there, whosoever, therefore, will be a friend of the world is an enemy of God. Now, this is a very tough thing to hear. It's very tough. But you become an enemy of God if, if you, you don't say the right thing, do the right thing. Okay, if you're too scared to open your mouth, you're an enemy of God. But mainly for yourself as well. To be a scaredy cat person, you're not helping yourself. You'll spend the rest of your life being pushed around by your pastor, by your parents, by your work colleagues. By You'll just get pushed around your whole life. Okay? Open your mouth and speak. Okay? Now, here we go. We're coming to the end now. So, what do I now persuade men or God? Who should I be popular with? Who's more important for you to be popular with? Sometimes you can have a people pleaser. Have you met those people? They just say, you know, they just want to be popular, so they'll agree with anything you say. <laughs> yeah, I agree with that. You know, uh, it doesn't work like that. Okay, you can't be a people pleaser. You'll waste your life. You'll marry the wrong person. You'll go to the wrong job. You'll, you know, imagine you're marrying someone just because um, uh, your friends, it makes your friends happy. Or you marry the wrong person because that's who your parents chose for you or your pastor chose for you. Or something. You've wasted your life. You've ended up with someone you don't really want to be with. You don't have true friends either because you, your true friends wouldn't, you know, steer you wrong like that. Um, but also... Sometimes when, we, when you please other people, you compromise and then you cheat on God. For example, if I go to a party and I don't want to leave that party, even though there's evil things happening around me, I've become an enemy of God. I've compromised God. I want to be more popular with men than with God. Many churches invited me to be part of some group that doesn't make any sense, a group that uh, compromises on the word and allows evil into their congregation. I could have been very popular with men if I agreed to do that. If I wanted to, um, if I wanted to become have a bigger church, 
with, uh, you know, and lots of people know my name. You know, all I have to do is compromise on this little thing, this tiny little thing. All I have to do is turn my back on God a little bit. I said no, and I felt so much better for it. I'm not saying I'm a good guy. I'm a sinner like everyone else. But what I'm saying is, for the one decision I made that day, I never ever regret it. Don't be popular with men. Be popular with God. Yeah. So let's do that. For if I yet pleased men, I shall not be the servant of Christ. You're not the servant of Christ if you're a people pleaser. If you compromise, you know, I accept the, what's that church, the, the Bethel one in, in America? We love LGBT. We openly encourage and support their community. You, you compromise. You, you're now the enemy of God. Yeah. God wanted Bethel forgot about, and you called your new church Bethel. You've insulted God anyway. A, you don't know the Bible. <laughs> you didn't read it properly. And B, you know, but they become popular with them because of their music. Uh, their doctrine's in the toilet. Uh, I don't think they even have a doctrine. But, you know, their music's popular. They become popular with men. So always make that choice. To, uh, to be close to God, people. Be a servant of God, not of man. Now, Jesus didn't die for you so that you start being a slave to other people. Okay? Don't be controlled by your church. Don't be controlled by the people around you. Don't conform to fit in. You do not fit in. Come out from among them. You're not one of these people anymore that's in the world. You're out of this world. And the world's going to hate you for it. But God's going to love you. <laughs> And it's up to you. You're going to have that choice. Many times in your life, you're going to have this choice. You're going to say, you know, that crazy preacher said it to me on the video. Okay? Choose God, not men. Okay? God made you. God's given you eternal life. God sent his son to forgive your sins. God's given you every opportunity he can for you to come. And now it's time to come back. And stay. Don't leave God now to, 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 to please men. So let's do that. Let's pray now. One moment. Okay. Okay. Heavenly Father, we thank you for giving us your word. We thank you for changing our lives. We thank you for setting us apart. I pray that everybody listening here has that courage to live their life apart from other people, apart in Christ. Unity in your word, unity in your purpose, but apart from the world who wants you know, to bring people down, who, who wants to seduce people with wealth, with anything to turn people against you. Heavenly Father, I want all Christians around the world to have this courage to live their lives with courage, don't live your life for another person. Whoever it is around you that makes you want to do a wrong thing, be there to give them courage to do the right thing and stand by you. Ask these things in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Bless everybody here. And those that watch the video later on in Canada, three in the morning or in England later on, and all those people, God, be with them. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Church, thank you for joining us today. Uh, the church, I believe next week's okay to come to the church. In two weeks' time. First of June, is it? Okay, we'll see you at the church first of June. You're very, very welcome. If you need a Bible, let us know. I think we've still got one or two left, maybe. You know, if you all steam in and take our Bibles, we won't have any left, but we'll do our best to get you a Bible. Uh, so we'll see you all in two weeks' time. And uh, God bless every one of you here. Okay. Go in peace. And may God be with you.